40% of all infertility is male infertility. To speak to the urologists and my male patients, they assume if there's sperm, they're fertile. But that's not really the case. So how do we evaluate a male for infertility causes? First, history. Are they healthy? Can they ejaculate? How often do they ejaculate? Do they have problems ejaculating? Are they exposed to chemicals? Are they exposed to drugs? Do they smoke? Do they drink? All these things affect male infertility. So we start with a history. From there, we get a semen analysis. A man has to ejaculate in a cup. What do we do when we evaluate the semen? First, we evaluate the semen itself. How much semen is in the ejaculate? What's the pH? How thick is it? What's the color? How long does it take to liquefy? That's all the general characteristics of the semen. Next, the semen are put on the microscope and we look at the sperm themselves. The average male has over 50 million per cc in his ejaculate. We call it low when it's under 20 million per cc because that's when fertility seems to really be affected. Next, we look at motility, how fast the sperm are moving. Are they moving straight in a straight line heading for that egg? Or are they swimming slowly in circles, not getting anywhere? Lastly, are they dead and not moving at all? We want at least 25% to be rapidly moving forward, aiming for the egg. Next, the sperm are stained on a slide and we look at what they look like. Big heads, little heads, double heads, double tails. Those are all abnormal sperm. There are different ways to count the percentage of abnormal sperm. For years, the World Health Organization told us that 30% abnormal was our cutoff and 70% normal was great. One researcher in an IVF lab, he decided to correlate his semen analysis with IVF outcome. He was very, very, very strict on what he was willing to call a normal sperm. So much so that anything less than 4% was his cutoff for very abnormal. He said, that if your sperm was less than 4% normal, there was an increased odds that the sperm would not fertilize an egg, even in the in vitro fertilization lab. Since his publication, more and more laboratories and even the World Health Organization have tried to use his strict Kruger morphology as our reference. So now, 96% abnormal sperm forms is actually okay, but less than 4% sperm forms is worrisome for failed fertilization. Some IVF clinics use this like it's God. If your semen analysis comes back with 0% normal forms, they will tell you to go right to IVF because you need ICSI, because your sperm don't know what to do. And I get where they're making that assumption, but I'm gonna go back to history. We always start with a diagnosis by taking a good history. The best analysis for sperm function is did your sperm work before? If your sperm impregnated an egg before, naturally, or with conventional IVF, you probably have functioning sperm. So you need to take history into account before jumping to treatments that may or may not be indicated. Kruger strict morphology has replaced the WHO criteria in most fertility clinics in the United States. It is now recommended that if your morphology indices are less than 4% normal, most clinics will recommend IVF with sperm injection for fertility treatment. It is still important to recognize that the semen analysis is not a diagnosis of infertility itself. It is a proxy for sperm function. In couples who have had low morphology indices but prior pregnancies, especially if they have been recent pregnancies, it may be possible that the sperm function fine even though morphology is off. I have seen conceptions naturally occur in men with low morphologies on their semen analysis. We always take history into account when advising a couple before recommending different treatments.